the disciples of Jesus were following him, and still they went into storms. Just because we have been saved and are daily following Jesus in our lives doesn't mean that we will not face storms. The disciples in the scripture face actual physical storms. And we're going to read about some of those in the weeks to come. But there are spiritual storms that we face as well, are there not? Maybe you today are going through a storm. It can come at any time when we least expect it. One of the bright sides for us in this world at this time is that technology has allowed us to get weather reports right here on these little devices, right? How many of us start the day off by checking our weather apps and uh, Finding out whether, what the weather is going to be like. How do I dress this morning? Is it going to be cold? Is it going to be warm? Is it What kind of a day is it? <clears throat> Maybe you don't do that if you're retired. But those of us that still work, we operate on that mode. Right? We don't want to be dressed too hot for the day or forget our sweater if it's going to be a little on the chilly side. But we have those devices a few weeks ago. Maybe you remember this. It wasn't very long ago. There were a, 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 a course of nasty storms that blew through the area. And uh, I was still living in Lodi at the time. And um, I, I frequently watch one of the uh, weather channels out of Cleveland. Um, I, I'm not going to name names, but you know. Um, anyhow, as he was on live air reporting the storms that were flying through the area, I was thinking about you all and praying for you because you were in a direct path for some of that worst weather. Uh, but it was a blessing to hear on the radio, okay, the storm's heading for Rochester. Anybody living in Rochester needs to take cover now. Hopefully you did. But if you're anything like my family, we stood out on the porch and watched. <laughs> right? Um, but we get that little advanced warning. Sometimes it's very little, but sometimes it's a little longer when those physical storms of life are coming. Sometimes when the emotional or the mental or, or illnesses come into our lives, the spiritual side of the storms, sometimes we don't get that advanced warning. But maybe you're going through a storm now. It's threatening your peace or your comfort or your joy. And oftentimes those storms bring about fear and doubt and hopelessness in our lives. Sometimes they are the darkest days of life. And maybe you can think back over the course of your life of some of those times when you've had to deal with them. Might be related to your marriage or other relationships or your finances, or your work relationships. Maybe it was somebody dealing with an addiction, or a divorce, or a rejection. I mean, still many of us are living with the, the storm and the fears that come with that thing called COVID-19. Still in the back of our minds, and for some of us, it's in the forefront of our moments. I know you all have experienced that within the church that took a big toll on the group of people that would sit over here in the choir.
Maybe you're in the middle of a storm. Instead of turn your dreams into nightmares. It feels like the sun is never going to shine again. But I am reminded today of God's word to us in Hebrews, um, in Hebrews in, in the New Testament, chapter 13, verse 5, where Jesus says, or God says, I will not forsake you in the time of your need. It's one of those scripture verses, you know, we all have memorized uh, John 3.16. We should also memorize Hebrews 13.5. I will not leave you or forsake you at the time of your need. Some of the storms come fast and quick and over and um, others are endless. Some cause huge damage. Others leave very little destruction. But storms are designed to destroy things. Keep that in mind. They're designed to destroy things. But I want you to know that God can and God will calm the storms in your life. But even if he does not, you can trust that in the middle of that storm, that God is with you. As I spoke earlier uh, um, in the children's portion, uh, that rainbow appeared in the sky when the sun was shining after a downpour. And it was visible. It was visible when part of the sky was still dark. And there was a storm in one place and the rainbow in another. That first rainbow appeared after the great flood and it became a symbol and an act of God's unconditional love for each and every one of us. And when I see rainbows, and I look for them all the time, the message in my brain is don't give up. The storms will pass. The sun will shine again. And God is with you. Every covenant comes with a promise. And a promise is a covenant or a declaration that one will do exactly what they say they will do. It is a, a pronouncement, if you will, an assurance that God is with us in the midst of all things. Even though our storms may come and they will go, some stay longer than others. You and I are faced with those um, feelings that come with those storms all the time. Maybe you've had times when the storms have hurt and disappointed and you've lost your hope and your joy. I want you to know that God is with you in the midst of those storms. And that no matter how hopeless it may seem, God is with you. I want you to repeat that with me. God is with me. Say it again. God is with me me. Now say it like you mean it. God is with me. That's the word to take with you for today. That God is with you in the midst of the storms of life. It may be uncomfortable for a season, 
There may be chaos, there may be panic. But you see, I, I found this quote many, many years ago. And I, I, I normally would say, oh, that needs to be embroidered on a pillow for the couch. And this is one of those kinds of, of things. Needs to be embroidered on a pillow for the couch. Don't tell your storm, or excuse me, don't tell God how big your storm is. Rather, tell your storm how big your God is. Hear that? Don't complain to God about the storm, but tell the storm you're in trouble because my God is bigger than you. And my God is going to take over and is going to see me through. So when you think about storms, there's a few things that I want you to do. And if you want to write them down, that's okay. You can do that. Feel free. It's a list. I believe there's eight. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. There's eight things to do in the midst of storms. First of all, number one, secure your foundation in Jesus Christ. That's a problem for some folks in our world today. We lose track of God and we focus on the problem instead of the Lord. And so secure your relationship and that foundation in Christ. Scripture reminds us that we have all sinned and fallen short of God's glory. And so we need to confess and ask for forgiveness of that which we have done that we ought not to have done. Number two on the list. This is a pretty easy one. Self-explanatory. Read and meditate on God's Word. Read your Bible. In the midst of the raging storm, true peace is really found in the Word of God. It is the solid ground upon which we stand, and it keeps us from drowning in the midst of the storms. Number three. Again, pretty easy. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. When you're facing difficulty, pray. When your neighbor is facing difficulty, pray. James 5 tells us, pray fervently, pray with persistence. Turn your worries into prayer. Scripture also tells us that the effective and fervent prayer of a righteous person avails much. It means God hears it. God hears it. Sometimes when I was going through my chemo and radiation treatments and um, I prayed through those times, that was, that was, you know, my time when I would, uh, one of the times when I would pray with God and I would think every month, every morning at 10 o'clock as I'm like, hey God, here I am again. And, you know, in my mind, He's probably saying, what do you want now? But you know what? He already knew what I wanted. And his message was, I'm so glad you're here. You are my beloved child. When we pray, God is waiting, waiting to hear from us. So number three is prayer. Number four, praise and worship God as best that you're able. Get into a season of thanksgiving, of praise and of worship. Part of my 10 o'clock uh, time, um, in fact, you know, after a while, I didn't want to say anything to the staff, but my, um, the time wasn't long enough for me. I didn't have enough time in that 10 o'clock time period to get the concerns out and the praises and the worship out in that 20 minute time span. 
But we are called to give thanks and to praise God. It doesn't mean to be just here on Sunday morning. It can be while you're driving down the road and you see this beautiful tree out in the field and the sun is shining through it and you just want to say thank you, God, for what you have created. Number five, don't be afraid. If you think about the scripture where Jesus was awoken in the middle of a storm at sea in the boat with his disciples, they were afraid. And Jesus said to them, why are you afraid? Our first response to the storms of life are fear and panic and worry and uneasiness and distress and oh my goodness what's going to happen now but I'm telling you to let that go and simply do not be afraid, but trust in the Lord in all things. Trust in God in all things. <coughs> Even in the moments when it seems hopeless. And going along with that is number six, which I've already alluded to. Put your trust in God. Some people, when the problems come, they just give up and say, I'm done. I can't handle it anymore. They stop praying. They stop going to church. They stop reading their Bible. And they wring their hands and say, oh, poor is me. But in reality, we are called to put our trust fully in God. Number seven. Don't get discouraged. Sometimes it takes a while to get through the storm and it derails our hope and our confidence and the storm beats us down. I want you to know that discouragement is a tool of the devil. And it is okay to feel discouraged but we need to confess that to God and say, Lord, help me through it. Isaiah 43 puts it this way. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flames scorch you. In the Bible, rivers, fire, bodies of water were kind of used as figures of speech for the things that we face in life that can easily overwhelm. But the promise and the hope to us is that as we go through that, God will be with us and we will go through it. I think this morning of the, um, the the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from the Old Testament. Do you remember them? They were put into the fiery furnace, but the flames did not destroy them. There's a lot of great songs about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Let me just say that. But we are to take courage, take heart, and don't give up whatever the storm may be that we are facing. Don't give up. Number eight, refuse to worry. Worry is a, a paralyzing kind of thing. It takes away our peace. Worry is the worst and it dwells in the midst of trouble and it makes it magnified and it seems to be bigger than it really is. Worrying 
in some ways is a waste of time. We need to fix our thoughts and our mind and our hearts on the things of God. And let the things of God be pleasing to us. Friends, I encourage you to take courage. Do not be afraid. Allow the rest and the hope and the peace and the comfort of Christ to be with you. For his yoke is light and easy. Amen. Let's pray. Oh God, we bow before you today in awe of your creation. Its vastness staggers our imagination. Its beauty kindles our excitement, its mystery defies our understanding. Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables, sometimes speaking words that were unclear at times for some of the folks, but your words are loud and powerful, and their meaning is always clear. Lord, we thank you for revealing yourself to us in Jesus and for the hope that we have that you are with us in the midst of all things. Lord, help us to put our trust in you as we go through the storms of life, knowing that you will give us the rest and the peace that we need for this time and every situation and season of life. Thank you, O oh God, for loving us. Help us to be witnesses to your love and light in the world in all the places we go this week. We pray this in the name of your Son, who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 